Okay, so let's have a look at this function here, which looks like a straight line, but you can see that there's a point of discontinuity here. So discontinuity simply means the function is uh, has gaps in it. So it's not continuous. So it continues up to there, then there's a gap. If we look at the function itself, you can see that the function is 6x minus 2 over 3x minus 1, which means that point of discontinuity is when x equals... A third, yep. Okay, so in terms of this function, it's a straight line function. It's a, it's a flat function, which means the gradient everywhere is, is zero. Okay, the gradient is zero, except at the point of di uh, discontinuity where it also doesn't exist. So if I ask you what the domain of this function here, the blue function, f of x, then the domain is all real x, um, I'm going to write this up on the board just for the video sake. All real x without the value of a third. Yeah? That's what the domain of that function is. So what about the gradient function? Now the gradient function, the range of the function, in other words the output, remember the gradient function is the derivative, the range of the function is just zero because it's the gradient is zero everywhere. Okay? But... The domain of the function, sorry, the domain of the gradient function, this is f and this is f dash. The domain of the uh, gradient function is also has a gap at one third. So it's all real values except for one third. Now, that's a no-brainer, I think. If the function is not defined at a third, then it cannot have a gradient to add a third at x equals a third. Okay, so the domain of the gradient function is all real x except for x equals a third. Any questions on that? So that's the no-brainer. Let's have a look at a few different examples here. And I'm just going to show you the picture first. Now, in every single example, I've got the blue line representing f of x and the red line representing the gradient function, f dash of x. Okay, so this is f of x here. And this is f dash of x. And it looks like it's a cubic, but it's not. This function is what we call a piecewise function. A piecewise function is just made up of a couple of different functions. So if you have a look here, we've got when x is less than 0, we've got uh, the function is, the rule is negative x squared. So that gets us up to the point here. When x is greater than 0, we've got... Um, we've got this function here, okay, x squared minus 2. And that gets us, sorry, that was x squared, negative x squared minus 2, sorry, is the rule. And then we've got x squared minus 2. So we've got half of a reflected parabola here and then half of a reflected parabola here. So it's not a cubic, it's just made up of two quadratics that have been joined together at x equals 0. Now, in terms of the gradient function, you can see that the gradient function exists all the way along until zero and then all the way from zero. The gradient happens to be negative here, getting down, well, sorry, the gradient is positive, but it's approaching zero here. And then the gradient's still positive, but it's now getting steeper and steeper, which is why it's going up here. But at the point zero, this graph and this graph, even though they're two pieces, this graph and this graph, both uh, from both sides, um, it is uh, the gradient is approaching zero. So what we have here is that even though we've got two pieces, we've got the gradient approaching zero from both sides at, at x equals zero, and therefore it is continuous for the whole function. Okay, so the gradient exists for the whole function. Okay, so in this case, I'll call this g. So G is actually defined for all real values because there's no gap at all. But the, um, and the gradient function's domain is also all real values. Okay, there's, there's, no, there's, no, um, there's no gap in the, in the gradient. Okay, good so far? All right, so they're the two base cases. Now we've got to make things a bit more difficult. Here, we have a function which 
is defined for all real x. I'm not going to show you the function yet. It's basically the same one as before, but I don't want to get into the weeds over the detail. Let's have a look at the picture. We can see here that the function goes all the way to the y-axis, but here it's not defined. There's, a, there's an open circle here, which means it's not defined here, but it does pick up over here. Okay, and then from here, it moves on. All right, so it is defined across all real x. In other words, every single value of x does have an output because when it stops being minus two, it starts being two. So that's fine. But it is not a continuous function because effectively the line needs to jump up before it continues. So where there is a discontinuity point in a graph, the gradient doesn't exist at that point. Okay? The gradient doesn't exist. So here, if I was asked what is the gradient of this blue function here, even though this gradient looks the same as it does in uh, the other function, it's the same uh, graph, a break in continuity of the function means there's a break in gradient as well. So if I, if I was asked what the gradient of this function is, and I'm not going to show you what the function is, just to make it less confusing. So the function domain is all real x, but the derivative domain is going to be all real x, but not zero, because there's a break in continuity. Okay? So for a, for a function to be differentiable at a particular point, it needs to be um, continuous at that point. And the, I'll show you the other condition in a second. This is not continuous at that point because there's a jump between the two blue lines here and therefore the gradient doesn't exist at that point. X equals zero. All right. What about this one? This one is joined up. We've got a straight line going all the way down and then at that point, it takes over and it becomes a nice little parabolic curve on the left here. You can see that the gradient of the function is just a constant number, negative one. It's a, it's a negative gradient. So the gradient is negative up into the y-axis. And then after the y-axis, it then becomes, um, it's, got, it's increasing over time because it's a parabola. Okay. So we can see that this function is continuous, but, but the gradient here is different from the gradient on this side. Okay, so in other words, it's kind of like the gradient would have two possible values. If I'm approaching from this side at x equals zero, I would say that the gradient is negative one. But if I approach it down ways, which we don't normally do, but we should be able to, if I approach it from this side, we know this is the turning point of the function, and so the gradient should be zero. So it's not well defined at x equals zero here. So when there's a sharp change in um, a sharp change in a gradient, you can see it's reflected here with a gap between the gradients. When there's a sharp change in gradient, the derivative doesn't exist at that point either, because the gradient's not consistent. Okay, so this would be the derivative, sorry, this would be the domain of the gradient function here as well. For, for the function, the domain is all real x. Every single x value, I can get out a y, I can get out a, a y value. But for the derivative, the gradient doesn't exist at x equals zero because of this sharp change. And by the way, I'm just using the y-axis as a, as a kind of like a, a place to look at, I suppose. All righty. We okay with that? One that's exactly the same effectively but just different function is this one here. Here we have the, these two lines meeting at x equals, uh, sorry, y equals negative two. So it's meeting here, x equals zero, y equals negative two. If I approach it from the left, the gradient is negative one. If I approach it from the right, the gradient is positive one. Okay, so if I'm going down here, 
the gradient's unchanging and it's positive one. We can see that with this red line here. If I take it from the left, the gradient is negative one. So again, if the gradient to the left is different from the gradient to the right, or if it's not approaching the same value, then we would say the derivative doesn't exist at that point. So for this function here, same as what I've got on the board again. There's a, even though it's defined for all real x, for the function, the gradient function has a gap where there's a, a sudden change. Okay, so you can see this is all about working out the domain of the gradient function f dash of x. So I have a question here, what is the domain of f dash of x? Um, and it looks like this. What you need to do is take the knowledge that I showed you, uh, I spoke about before, which is that there is a gap in the, the, the gradient's not defined if there's a discontinuity in the function or if there's a sudden change in gradient in the function, um, then, the, then the gradient is not defined at those points. So see if you can write down or you can talk to the person next to you, then write down what you think the domain of this function is.